Life's mainly been good on the river with Joseph and Grimm. They respect me, and I respect them in turn. Joseph's a good man. A little sentimental at times, but that isn't really a flaw, is it? I don't know if I'll stay on the Berebel forever. It's been a good boat to serve on the last five years or so. You need people you can rely on on the river. It's not all just about fishing and trading. There's dangers in the water. Beasts. People. Sometimes a mixture of both. But we river folk, we try and stick together. When we can. The river wardens can't be everywhere all the time. Hell, sometimes even when they are there, they don't do much good. But that's another story. No, you've got to rely on your crew. And yourself. If you don't want to meet an early grave. This is Red Moon role-playing. Our three heroes have found themselves, once again, in a rather unpleasant situation. On their boat ride back to the town of Wisebrook, and then from their Altdorf, and from their Kebabad, they have found an obstacle. Boat similar to theirs, seeming maroon on the side of the canal. Such an obstacle isn't impossible to get past. Boats often have these problems on the canals, after all. But there is something unpleasant that has occurred on this boat. There are dead bodies, and some of them are rather unusual. As our heroes have been investigating this and trying to make their way into the innards of the boat, they have heard a noise. A low, dull creak, as if there is movement somewhere on the boat. What do the three of you do? It's coming from the door leading to that captain's quarters area that would lead down to the rest of the boat. The innards, anyway. I've drawn my dagger um, just to have something to protect myself, although I do feel woefully unprepared to enter into some kind of combat here. Heinrich has the same feeling, but does not let it affect his decision. I will draw my rapier, uh, looking over my shoulder to make sure that Kruger and Siegfried, if she's coming along, are positioned in case something leaps out of this door, uh, and then I'm going straight for the handle. You go for the handle and fling open the door. You find yourself in a very small captain's quarters. There's a bunk, there's a table, there's a bunch of drawers with various things you'd expect to find on a boat such as this, and the table is overturned, and there are two bodies on the floor. You can't really make out one of the bodies, it seems to be underneath the other, they seem to be wearing a hood of some kind. Maybe it's a man or a woman, can't quite tell, but there is something far more alarming above that person, or at least draped over them. You're not sure of the gender, or they have very long, swampy hair. This person seems mostly humanoid until you get to the arms, Heinrich, where there are giant bat-like wings instead of human arms, covering an awful lot. Levery. Although, one of them looks like it has a few holes in it. This is what you see, but nothing's moving. What do you do? Would it be imprudent of me to make sure that it stays not moving? Certainly, what do you do? If it's waterlogged, I would presume the rapier can pass quite easily through the skull. It certainly is easy enough. You step towards the being, ready your rapier, and the bat-like being suddenly springs to life, its arms flailing about manically. It turns its face to you, a woman's face, but contorted and twisted with giant fangs instead of a normal human mouth, and it just screeches at you as it tries to throw itself at you. Please make a weapon skill check. That is a 40 under 43. And the being thrusts itself at you, right through your rapier. And you blink, and the being gurgles, a sort of <coughs> and then slumps onto your weapon. Oh, well, first of all, I'm going to pretend that that was intentional and a result of my skill. And then second, I'm going to not looking, eyes focused on this creature. If, it, if it's not dead, dead, we were just talking about reanimation a second ago, and I'm not taking any chances. I'm just going to say, so we're burning it, right? All of it? Um, I think that's what we're supposed to do, right? This isn't supposed to be uh, left like this. Yeah, so I think it's... With, with the most curiosity in the world, there's... Let, let's opt for the safest course of action for once. Let's not push our luck. 
so soon after leaving Bogenhafen. You'll have to explain to Yosef why we can't take any of the cargo, no matter what the, the Riverfolk Code says. I don't want any of that getting on any of us. Agreed. Well, presuming nothing else jumps out of a cabinet, I think we return to the top deck and then onto the beer bell? If we can use some boat hooks to drag this thing at a distance uh, to, to the riverbank... Uh, burning it in a barge is only going to do half the job. Uh, after all, as soon as it makes contact with the water, any fire is going to go out, and there's still the risk someone might come into contact with a, the mutated remains of this poor bastard. Well, let me ask you a question that I'm honest to Sigmar, not excited to hear the answer of. If there's one of these under the water line, it's still a problem, right? Can you swim? Can I sw I'm born of the river, of course I can swim. Well, uh, I've heard plenty of tales of sailors that consider it bad luck to learn, so... Kruger, as they're having this conversation, your eyes move around the cabin a little. You notice a few things. Number one, Heinrich very skillfully just speared that being, but it's still bleeding a little. And you notice that on its side are two daggers. It had already been thrust heavily into its abdomen, which you're pretty sure are not yours or anyone else's. And then you notice that the figure that was on the ground lets out a certain... Uh, and that is not the, that is the one that hasn't been, you know, speared uh, or, or attacked with the rapier. It's, it's someone that that looks like they're still alive? You don't know. They don't look from this distance like anything's happened to them, but they were sprawled out underneath that being, and you do think you see a little bit of blood around their head. I will move up to this uh, being then to see if... Are, are they human? Are they all right? They have a hat currently obscuring their face. They seem to be wearing levers, travelling levers. They have a little patch around their belt where daggers would have gone woman's hands, you think, maybe? They've got a little bit of nail varnish on. And they seem quite thin. The physique seems female as well, you think? I'll move closer then, still trying to keep a little bit of, of, of distance uh, to the extent that that is possible in, in, in this cramped um, area. Um, to just see if I can get a better look. To see if it is someone who is horribly mutated or if this is simply one of the people who worked on this boat who um, have seemingly survived this attack. You do so, and do you do anything? Remove the hat, for example? It's quite a nice-looking traveller's hat, little purple feather in it. I'll, I'll do so. Um, being careful with my dagger um, close by, just in case this thing happens to have ill intentions. And you will remove the hat. Underneath is a young woman, similar in age to yourself. Long, dark hair. Very small nose. You know her. You know her very well. Or at least you did once, years ago now. From Nome. It's... Rena. Rena Summerfield. Or Rena Smallnose Summerfield. A lot of the other orphans used to make fun of her for her nose. They often learnt their lesson shortly after. Rena, um, I say. Is that you? The woman blinks a little. She seems very dazed. You notice that her head is bleeding a little. There's a bit of a wound there. Ah, uh, what? Ah, uh, what? Uh. Siegfrieda, um, could you come and help my friend here this is um i actually know this lady um yes of course uh, and then i back up is she bearing any of the changes of any of the others none visible at this moment in time she's fully clothed after all but you don't know what lies underneath her robes maybe but she has two arms two legs two eyes and a head wound okay i'll approach with a little more caution uh, excuse me, my dear, are you, are you hurt? Um, ugh, I, 
Fine as a daisy. Fine as a... What? Oh gosh, three of you. Oh dear. What happened on board to everyone else, all the rest of the crew? She starts to answer and then her eyes slowly roll back just a little. Would you like to roll law medicine? Absolutely. It's my best skill. Uh, I get a 60 out of 63, so it's only a marginal success. Well, you think it's concussion? Probably from the head wound. Hmm. We need to bring her up to the surface and gently, away from all of this, get her to the riverbank. Yes, let's do that. Um, perhaps she can tell us what happened here. When Keep your gloves on, though. I will give him a look, just to be sure. Oh yes, <laughs> oh yes. And um, I'll I'll help to get her ashore then, uh, carry her. You do. You pick her up carefully. She murmurs a little, and you make sure to get her back on the boat. Where the others quickly help you get her back on the boat. What do you do, Heinrich? You still gonna go down and see if you can look into the bottom of the boat a little? I need to. I'm glad that they have uh, this woman on the way to safety, but none of us will be safe if there's another quad of tentacles hanging out just under the waterline. Indeed. Check out the bottom. One more body, and another one of the bodies with changes. The one who doesn't have changes looks like a younger man, maybe 18, 19 years old. Both dead. And a couple more crates of cargo. Check what the cargo is. Dwarven iron. Very valuable. A box of that could easily get you anywhere between 8 to 10 crowns. Two of them down there, and then finally you realise the water begins to rise up, and well, you'll poke your head in a little bit, but you can't really see anything there. I'm not so foolhardy as to go swimming in dark, dangerous water in a boat that could collapse at any minute. That will sate my curiosity for now. Then you find yourselves all back on board the boat. You're cautious, but you don't think there's anything else here. Just maybe including the body you fished out earlier, three more bodies without changes, and then it seems there were three or four bodies with changes. Everyone dead. It doesn't take much to work out that there's been a struggle here. A battle. Hmm. So it's quite possible the ones who that have changed weren't actually crew. Then again, the... Well, our job isn't to investigate scenes like this. Not that, not that we really have a job, come to think of it. But uh, I think Heinrich and Kruger, we should discuss openly with our the crew of the Barabel what exactly we are going to do here. We don't want to aggravate them even further with thoughts of s suspicion and lies because we start burning things right in front of them. They need to know exactly why we're doing what we're doing. Yes, and I'm sure they will agree with our course of action. Um, once they know the reason. Well, if... Um, Heinrich, if you're prepared to break the news, I can see about treating this patient, see what we can learn, and if she's well enough to travel with us. Not that I particularly favour leaving her here if she's not. And then making a very fast move away. Uh, it's possible this is just mo roving bandits that targeted a slow-moving barge. But who can say? Things have been taking a more chaotic turn recently, haven't they? They sure have. I will deliver the news to Josef, uh, both about the bodies and then the cargo. He frowns. He nods. Bloody hell, boy. Mutants here on the bloody Weisbrook Canal. It's bloody... It's not good. Can you believe there was that nonsense? Did you hear in Pogenhafen? I don't know why, why the Emperor's saying there are no mutants in the Empire. I, I don't understand why he'd be saying that. I mean, look, look, this isn't no mutants in the Empire, is it? Far be it from me to second guess the Emperor and his intentions. But I. Three times in as many months, mutants. <sighs> 
uh, uh, anyway, we can we can discuss the the grander principles uh, at some point in the future. What's the best way to handle this? We we can't be stuck here at anchor waiting for God knows what to happen. No, no, you're right, lad. Oh, oh, it's a waste of a good boat, but we'll have to burn the boat, burn those, those mutants. But we're not leaving behind the good folk. You could tell the doctor, she, she, well, I mean, I know how to bundle her body up safely, but I'm sure she'll know something better than me as well, being a doctor and all that. We get them on board, we stow them, we'll, we'll take them to Wisebrook, make sure the priests of Moor see them. I don't suppose you saw anything that says what their names were or who they were. Poor, poor, poor souls. I, I have to say, I wasn't searching that that closely. I, I can I, maybe in the captain's quarters, I can find a log if if it's important to you. Hmm. Might be good to quickly just do it, just to see if there's a contract on the cargo. You don't, we ain't leaving the cargo, boy. It's, we need to make sure it gets where it was going. Dwarven iron, you said. That's going to be important to someone. We can't salvage all of it, but... What was it you said? Like three or four b- crates? Thereabouts. Well, we'll get to work getting those off. All right. Well, this, uh... The dangerous part still here, but I think this is a river folk matter. Tell me what you need done. I... We'll be informing the River Wardens as well, and they can come and clean up the wreckage later. It's their job after all, not ours. I'll tell Siegfrieda that she's only allowed to poke at the changed bodies. If you do quickly pop back to the boat, it's not dangerous at all, Heinrich. You will find there is a bit of a ledger. doesn't have any very interesting information other than informing you that this was a family-owned boat. The family name. The schleps. And the cargo... Five crates of dwarven iron due to arriving Camperbad. I'll return the information dutifully, uh, and to whatever end I can assist in hauling up this iron onto the beer bell, then I'm happy to play along. There was also one other note you saw just on the last page. Passenger recently picked up. Passenger due to port at Wittgendorf. Does it say where the passenger was picked up? It does. It would be Marenberg. Well, I don't have Siegfried's training about how miasma spreads, but that seems to be perhaps where this started. Very alarming. If so, Marenberg is an extremely rich, extremely wealthy trade town. Well, so is Nuln, but they let Kruger out of there, so not everyone is of, of, uh, of high breeding stock and wealthy means. This is true. Anyway, suffice to say, helping out the crew, this isn't a difficult job. It just takes time. You're able to get the bodies on board. You're able to start with boat hooks moving the wreckage out of the way. And then finally, getting the torches ready for the burning that will eventually happen to those corpses. At least when you're ready for it to happen. Siegfrieda, please roll a heal check. Let's see how you do. Give yourself a plus 20. This is not difficult for you. You have all the equipment you need. Uh, yeah, that's a success. Another success. 44 out of 78. This is child's play, especially after somehow correcting a man's stomach after it had been stabbed multiple times. I mean, I would say it's a different kind of medicine, treating a concussion to uh, meatball surgery on someone's intestines, but that doesn't mean I'm not skilled in both. I'm feeling quite proud of myself. As I take her through the motions of what she should and shouldn't do if she's had a head injury, the, I, I advise her, you know, we will keep we'll keep you secure, we, we will keep you safe, and we don't want you moving around a great deal. Come the morning, I'm going to be asking you a few questions about what you remember, and it's not so that we get answers, it's just to tell how badly you've hurt your head. But rest assured, you're in safe hands. Certainly safer than if we'd left you on that barge. The woman nods, happy to answer your questions, but still a little out of it. That makes sense. She's going to need a little bit of rest before she can coherently answer your questions. Well, I'm just going to leave you with Kruger for a moment because I I have something I need to share with one of my companions. I stand up. As soon as I turn away from her, I frown having 
heard what Heinrich has been discussing with the crew of the Bearer Bell. Given that he just told me. And I go up to Heinrich and I say, Are you serious? We're going to give the untouched bodies the correct burial ceremonies and... And leave them unincinerated. Oh, believe me, it's not my idea, but they take this very seriously. I, I take the transmission of infection very seriously. And I don't know what... I don't know boat river people customs. Does it mean dropping them in the bottom of the water? Does it mean burying them in the riverbank? I don't know. But what I do know is if we bury them in the soil, especially close to here, there are plenty of mammals that will unearth them. And if they are infected, they will spread whatever they have. As Siegfried's going on, you'd know already, Heinrich, that's not happening. They mean to take it back to Wisebrook and hand it over to the priests of Moor, who would then correctly bury the bodies. Well, I, I, I rattle off my medical expertise and then fold my arms. Uh, Siegfried, we're not, we're not going to plant them like, like mutant trees. No, they, they'll take them to the priests of Moor and do whatever they do. To, I assume to make sure that they don't come back, I, obviously outside of my area of expertise. So, in, so instead, listen, I am not arguing with the customs of your people. And I'm sure that in most cases they're perfectly valid and safe. But there's a superstitious element here. And and it's even... And I, I will... Speaking as a physician, I may not be a member of a guild, but I consider myself a physician. If we are having to transport these bodies, at least one of us is going to have to watch them. At least for a while... Those kinds of mutations are transmissible. You don't just catch them out of thin air. Now, it could well be that my fears are completely unfounded and the bodies will remain exactly where they lay until we pass them off to a priest with, with full knowledge of what these people were killed by. But until that time, if we're moving them, we need to be damn sure that they're not going to wake up while we're asleep and wrap tentacles around our necks. Would it be we could we could secure them to the deck, uh, rope and chains, we could wrap them to prevent, I, I don't know, f fluids? Would that... That, 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 that all sounds safe. That's, I understand some uh, seafarers put bodies in barrels to preserve them. If we have anything like that, that might may be an idea. If I can convince Yosef to let you take some precautions, would that make you feel more comfortable about seeing them delivered to where they can meet their proper final rest? Yes, it would. I'm and I'm sorry I'm sounding so on edge about this. It's just this isn't the first time we've encountered things like this, mutations like this. And Especially with what we just went through in Bogenhafen. There's... I keep using the word, but there is chaos in the air. Things are not normal around here. I don't trust bodies to not just get up and start walking around again. No, and the more that you talk about it, the more you're convincing me. I... I'll talk to Yosef, but I... if there is chaos about... I. I don't think scorning the gods is the right way to start our journey. I'll mutter to myself that I trust more in my scalpel and medicine pouch than I do the gods, but I'm not going to announce that in the face of these superstitious people. Well, you go to find Josef Heinrich, and he looks at you a little incredulously, saying, Hi, lad. Your friend does know that we're not all morons. Of course we're going to tie the bodies up and wrap them. I was expecting her to offer something else, being an actual doctor. Siegfried comes from a, a, a different kind of, of lifestyle, in the same way that we read stories about the city. She reads stories about uh, us, but 
excellent. I she'll she'll be happy. There, uh, I'm. Of course, of course, we'll be wrapping them up safely. A bit of disinfectant down, you know, where we got it for wounds. Of, give them all a quick wash in it. We'll be respectful, but we're taking them back and we're taking them to the priest. We're not just leaving them here. The bodies of the others, of course, will be burning them. She'll be glad to hear it. There is the matter of the boat. Aye, lad, I know. We're going to have to... I don't really want to burn the whole thing, but it might be safe, best safe than sorry in this sort of scenario. Is what we did before. I told you one of my old mates, he had a... He had a change. We had to burn the whole thing. Hey, someone you... You sailed with, th- this happened to them? Three years ago. Aye. Oh, lad, I keep forgetting you're still young. This does happen, you know. Just not normally here, but in some of the northern parts of the Empire. It's something that happens. I... You don't think every story of mutants and is, 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 is a fairy tale, did you? No, I just didn't expect it to be so... normal. I mean, not normal, but... Well, it ain't normal, lad, but it's not not unusual. Just it, the, the fact that it's happened here... This is one of the safest canals in the whole empire. Not good. Not a good sign at all. Oh, God. Uh, I, the river wardens, are we going to expect trouble from them if we mention this? There's no... Are there, is there mutant quarantine something that... I think you're overlooking things a little, lad. You don't, you don't just touch a mutant and turn into one the next day, especially if you're a good, sigma-fearing citizen. I, in fairness, I'm learning quite a lot in the last... Uh, 20 minutes. If it makes you any better, when we get to Weisenbrook, you can find a priest. I'll give you some coin. You can pay for a blessing, or something like that. I, uh, I, th- I may very well take you up on that. I, look, I don't... If there is risk, I, I don't want to put you or Walda or Grimm at any kind of danger. Lads, you keep going on about risk. If you three were not here... We had still investigated, we'd still be doing everything we're doing. So if anything, you being here, lad's gonna make us safer, not less safe. Get what I mean? Uh, of course, I just... If you don't have to handle the bodies, then you shouldn't have to. We can... we can handle that. Good. Don't you worry. We'll be seeing these good souls back to Moore's gates, and we'll be giving them a blessing of Bogenhafen as well. They were good river folk. No, this is... I don't know what these bastards wanted, but... Who knows what they want? No one knows. That's the whole point. They're all crazy and mad. Servants of fell powers. Hmm. But let's just move on. But yes, unless your doctor friend has something to say about it, we'll be burning the boat soon. And of course, getting the cargo on. And don't worry, don't worry her. We'll be giving it a bit of the old disinfectant oil, of course. But we're not letting that much iron just flow in the river. It's madness. I will... Do my very best to see that she's fine with it. Kruger, you're alone with your friend. It is her. A little older, of course, but you can recognize that nose anywhere. Although at this moment in time, she seems very dizzy and sleepy. But what do you do? I try to remember... What? When was the last time I met her, actually? And how was our relationship, actually? Is she someone who, uh, who who will have fond memories of me, or... Uh, I mean, I wasn't always the nicest guy. I was looking out for myself, you know? Indeed, it was slightly awkward. It was when you left Nung. Left to make it big. She didn't think you needed to leave the group. She thought you were fine where you were. You disagreed. Her sister Sigrid felt that you should find your own path. But you'd been with them for quite some time. She was one of the other orphans at the orphanage. Granted, she had her sister, but you were all kind of brothers and sisters for a time. So, it wasn't the best parting, but you said to yourself, you'd show them all. You'd come back big, popular, rich, and they'd see that you were right and they were wrong to stay in Null. Hmm. I wonder what made her seek her fortune outside of Null, then. I'm really looking forward to being able to talk to her about that very thing when she is in better shape. 
I guess this isn't really a time when it's possible to have any kind of conversation with her. She's still very much under, right? Indeed. But for now, she seems safe. I'll just keep a watchful eye and, and make sure that well, she doesn't turn into some kind of mutant that will try and eat our brains. Um, that's what I do, having my dagger close at hand, just in case. Siegfrieda, what do you do? You notice, despite your horrors, that actually Grimm and Walter are handling the bodies with gloves. They are wrapping them and then tying them up, so to speak, and then bundling them on top of each other so that if they did start moving, it would be awfully awkward for them. They're also trying to keep them in the very farthest part of the boat they can. And they seem ready to burn the boat, waiting for you to say something. I do breathe a sigh of relief because while maybe my panic got the best of me there, I do think a lot of these river folk are morons. Uh, not, not in the sense that I think they're deliberately harmful or, or malevolent or anything like that. I just don't think they are educated. What I do make the mistake of assuming, and it's something I need to get better at, is I don't realise how much education comes through worldliness. And that's something I lack. And so, shaking my head to myself, I will give the give an okay sign to, to drop the pitch and the flame on the barge up ahead. Once it's... Uh, burned down to an acceptable size, I guess we will coast on past it. Uh, I don't see much of a need for us to venture into the forest to find more of these things. No. The explanation given to you by Yosef does seem to make a lot of sense, especially of what we're looking at. It does look as if these things attacked the boat. You're reminded of what happened with the wagon. It was the same scenario. Yeah, the the question in my mind is did they attack from the riverbank or did they attack from the water itself as some of some of these mutants have got watery mutations or aquatic mutations would be a better way to put it but not all of them. Ultimately though, heading out into a forest without any kind of trail being visible or anything like that, or us being particularly close to a hub of civilization, uh, well, Bogenhafen is a day or more behind us. Uh, yeah, seems like a bad idea. So, if we're happy to get our patient on board the hour barge and the and the crew of the bearer belt don't object to her being there, then uh, I am content. Not that it's all about people pleasing Siegfrieda, but I am content. Heinrich, you help light the boat. The corpses go up quickly, the boat going up quickly as well, especially with the pitch, of course. It's a shame about the boat, but the cargo has been taken off. You've given it a very good firm look over, and it really is just standard crates filled with dwarven iron. Good dwarven iron, but not the best dwarven iron in the world. It's not unusual for that sort of thing to be transferred along the rivers. There's no scary symbols or strange stains on any of the crates, so at least you feel the cargo is normal. You do notice one thing, though. It's an odd thing, just as you're about to leave. One of the bodies, flaming quite nicely, something on its shoulder begins to smoulder just a little, just for a few seconds. A mark. Like a crown. A reddish crown, you think to yourself. But maybe that's just because of the flames. But then it's gone. And then the boat is behind you, smouldering away in the night. And you continue on your way. The next day comes. It is morning. And all three of you are around this woman. You've come in, Siegfrieda, to check she's okay. And she is. And she's eating some food. And you think she is ready for questions. What do you do? Well, the first thing I'm going to ask her is, what do you remember of the events that led to your head injury? Oh, Sigma. Sigma. Oh, God. Um, Sigma. Uh, okay. Shit. 
Sorry. Yeah, I was... Oh, God, I was in the, the room. I was talking to Captain, and then there was a shriek from outside. God, this thing. Oh, it came from the side. It's tentacles. It was just dragged one of the boatsmen right off, and, and he had his crossbow bow out, and then there was this thing, and it came in through the door, and I got my daggers out, and... <laughs> she, she laughs a little looking at you, Kruger, but then seems to realise that she's not in old company with the other two people. Uh, oh, I gave him a good... her, it, a good, good two, one stab. The, the thing with the wings. I yeah. And then I went down and shit. <laughs> shit! I'm still alive! That's... fuck. That seems very lucky. No, well, it, it is. It is very lucky, indeed. Uh, do you know if your barge had stopped before this attack occurred? Were you resting, let's say, before setting off? Or was this an attack while you were in motion and the helmsman then just steered into the bank? While we were in motion. Just, just, well, a day behind us now, right? Yeah, it's fucking Weisbrook Canal. I don't know, you used to say things out here were supposed to be safer than null. Kruger, guess you were wrong on that. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I was. Um, this isn't the first time we've seen something like this. Um, these kinds of creatures are, um, are abound, it seems. Uh, perhaps the streets were safer. Now I've got a very important question for you, and of course, if you can't answer it or you can't remember anything like that, that is fine. But I need you to think. Do you remember hearing any of them say anything, express anything, make any kind of declarations, even if it may have been someone shouting die or or swearing to the gods or something like that? It's important that we know, I guess, more about them, and one of the best ways we can find that out is if they communicated at all. Bloody hell, is it really? All right. Oh, what did they say? Do those do mutants even speak properly? I don't know. Um, well, that that's my question, really. We, we've interacted with mutants before, and they were capable of communicating. I don't know. Um, die, die, glory for the red crown, uh, die. And then lots of screeching, and then, like I said, I was too busy trying not to get killed. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's helpful. Well, what happened to the everyone else? I'm afraid you are the only survivor from your your vessel. At least the only one that we found. It's possible others did uh, jump ashore and fled into the forest, but it was too dangerous for us to go hunting. By Sigma, fuck that shit. Um, okay. Oh, they were just a nice family as well. Um, Were you just a passenger or were you a crew member? Oh, I'm a passenger. I'm not... <laughs> Uh, Kruger, they can tell you I'm not a boat woman. <laughs> no, you definitely aren't. I'm, I must say I'm a little bit surprised to see you here. I thought you for sure were going to remain back with the with the family, so to speak, in, in Nome. W what are you doing here? Her nose wrinkles a little. Would you like to roll an intuition check? That is a 28 under 43, two degrees of success. She's trying to hide it, but she's very annoyed with you suddenly asking that question. She's trying to hide it. I look, I, I, I don't mean any offence, I mean... No offence meant, friend. What can I say? You left, didn't you? And uh, a lot of other people did too. So everyone went their separate ways. So I, uh, I went down to Marenburg. Remember you used to say the streets were lined with gold? You weren't wrong. You weren't wrong. There's some really rich people down in Marenburg. <laughs> but it didn't work out. It was fine. I'm just, uh, traveling. She kind of gives you a bit of a pout. No, oh, look, it's, it's fine. You, you have your, you have your journey, I have mine, you know. But if there was any, if there could be, could be any reason for why they would have attacked your uh, vessel in particular, um, that might be good to know, but it, it seems like it might just have been a, a random attack, I suppose. I reckon so. I don't exactly go around pissing off mutant bands, if that's what you're asking. Mm. 
Unless they were after the cargo. What are you doing here? What happened to being big in Middenheim? All those new folks you were going to hang around with? Oh, it, um... Uh, it's a work in progress. Huh. I'll get there one day, I say and I smile. Learning something new every day. And it's nice to see you, though. Um, nice to see a familiar face from the past. She wrinkles her nose again and turns back to you, Sigfrida. For you, Sigfrida, a lot of the hostility that suddenly was in the air vanishes as she looks at you quite earnestly and says, Listen, thank you. Um, you didn't, uh, thank you for helping. Um, I don't have much coin. A few silvers? Oh, you don't, you don't need to pay. Uh, quite honestly, uh, I believe that sometimes these things work themselves out and no doubt by tending to you, uh, I will be given a certain amount of liberty to do harm to something more deserving. So don't, don't, fr don't fret on that account. Uh, in honesty, I have to credit you with your ability to eliminate or at least render that mutant unconscious with just your daggers. And, and take such little harm in return. We've seen people with far worse injuries, trust me on that. Well, I still reckon I got lucky, but, uh... <laughs> Gruka could tell you. I could handle myself. We had to handle ourselves quite a lot back in the day, didn't we? That's that's true. And I look at the, the, the rest of the group. Yeah, um... Rena was definitely someone you... You didn't want to fuck with. Um, she, um... She knows how to use those daggers. She then looks to you, Heinrich, and says, Uh, no offence, uh, you, you've got the look of, I, I know she were talking with, I think, the captain. Uh, where's the uh, boat going? Right, out of interest, because I'd already, uh, I'd already paid for passage on one boat. Um, I'm sorry to say, this boat only goes so far as Kemperbad. I don't know where after that, but I can't say we're heading too far in your direction. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, that's, no problem. Sure. Thanks. Great. Okay. Hmm. Say, uh, she looks at you, Kruger. Can we have a quick word in private? Just a quick one. Sure. Oh, don't mind me. I'll, I'll, I'll exit the cabin. What do you do, Heinrich? I'm not going to come between Kruger and his lady. I'll follow Siegfrieda. You both leave. She looks about a little, cautiously, frowns. This isn't good. I need to... I don't think I'm going to have enough coin to get another boat from Camperbad. Could you... Do you how do well do you know these people? Friends? I owe them my life. They, uh... You can trust them. They, uh, they're with me. Right, could you maybe convince them to go down to Wittendorf? I know it'll be a bit further, but I need to... I need to get there. Soon. Well, I could certainly uh, bring it up with them. Um... That's where the this iron was headed, or is that headed towards Camperbad? Yes. That's where, just to confirm, your boat's already going there. That's where the cargo is. And you might remember there was something else that might be in Camperbad, but maybe you haven't really been thinking about that. No, there has been... It's been a bit of a... It hasn't been something I've been thinking about um, all that much this last day, but... What do I remember, actually, about Camperbad and what's awaiting there? Siegfrieda said there was a woman who lived there. A woman who gave a book. A book to a man who was trying to do something very unpleasant in the town of Bogenhafen. Right. Right, there was that unfortunate business. Well, look, I can bring it up with them and, and uh, see if we can we can go as far as Wittgendorf. Um, no promises, but uh, I'll see what I can do. Good. You can make it up to me then. Um, you know, you, d you can say no. Again, I, I, I guess you've got all your big important things, but I just... It's, it's secret. I, I, I understand, yeah. Look, it, it's, it's not like... <laughs> the big important stuff, it, it sort of happened and, and didn't turn into anything, so... I, if there's anything I can do to help you, I, I'd, I'd, I'd love to, <laughs> to be honest. I mean... Really? Look, we're, we're kind of family, aren't we? I mean, supposed to help each other. I used to think so. I used to think so. And you decided you were too good for us. Well, you know, we all make mistakes. All right. 
Chocolate Sigrid. She's in Wittendorf. And... I just need to... No, she's okay. So I'm going to go there and we're going to check she's okay. And then that's it. That's that. So if you want to help, you could you could help me convince this lot to go there. And then you can come with me. And then when everything's fine, which I'm sure it will be because it will be fine. Then, then we'll be good. All right. I'll see if I can uh, convince them of that. And uh, you just rest here and uh, make sure that you're uh, ready for the for the rest of the, the trip. All right. Thanks, I suppose. I suppose you've technically saved me life. I think you saved yourself. Damn impressive work with the daggers, I must say. Well, I was always good with a dagger. Even you had to admit that. All right. Thanks. Again, if... If you can't, it's it's not the end of the world. I'm just it's just I just I don't know what else I'll do, and I need to get there as soon as I can. Hmm. I I understand. All right. Well, you stay here and rest up, and I'll uh, head um towards uh, Siegfrieda and um, Heinrich. Well, an exciting start to our new leg. Yes. Uh, um. An acquaintance from the past. As you heard, we grew up on the streets of Nulm together, and I have no idea how she could have ended up here. Um, it does seem as though the world is rather small, but perhaps it's fate. <laughs> perhaps it's fate. Uh, regardless, it, her sister, um, Sigrid, is... Well, she's supposedly in Wittgendorf, and she wants to head over there to... Make sure that she's all right. Um, it, it would add an extra leg to our trip, but perhaps we can find some way of picking something up in Kemperbad and, and uh, bring it to Wittgendorf. Make sure that we um, actually make money off of that leg of the trip as well. We want to get the lay of the land to make sure this uh, Lady Herzen isn't on the lookout for us. But I think that's going to be the case wherever we stop that's in proximity to Bogenhafen, although it's still a fair distance away. Got a long way to travel. That's been the case everywhere we've stopped so far. Yes, and I can't think it's all of our making. For a while I was rather blaming myself for some of our, I guess, ill fortune, but not to place too much importance of us in the great, great scheme of the gods. Uh, there's there's certain things that seem to arise for us that that means we're on the right track to something. I don't know if you have that feeling as well that our involvement is not a purely coincidental affair. As I said, I think we're meant to do good things. And if it means stopping conspiracies, or at least revealing them, then I think we can do that. I can live with this level of excitement. Heinrich, as you're talking, and the name Wittgendorf has been said again and again and again, you suddenly realise you actually heard that name before, before all of this. When you were talking with Joseph, he said your uh, parents were heading down that way last time he saw them. Just suddenly remember that little fact from days ago. I'll mention this quietly, not focusing on the my parents part, but focusing on the it would be a reason to get Yosef to go that way part. That's just mental compartmentalization uh, from me, given what happened around on the coach and such. I'm certain we can persuade Yosef to make his way there. Last I heard, he said my parents were heading in that direction, and I'm sure, if the price is right, he'd be willing to head upstream for both me and our new friend. I wouldn't worry too much about making money. If there's one thing Yosef knows how to do, it's turn a profit. There has to be something in Kemperbad that people in Wittgendorf want. Indeed. And not forgetting, of course, you've just taken on a whole bunch of extra cargo, which, if sold correctly, will get you another 40, maybe 50 gold crowns for the whole crew, of course. 
Uh, well, if you think it's worth pursuing, uh, Kruger, I will. I can take the plan to to Yosef. At the very least, we have a few days to think it over. If you could do that, that would be that would be fantastic. Um, I've always felt a little bit bad about all those people I left behind in Nuln, and if I can do anything for Rena now, especially in this difficult situation that she's in, well, it would make me feel better and, and less guilty. I say, and I have a kind of sheepish look on my face. <laughs> no, I understand. And it'll give me the opportunity to tell Yosef why we'll be spending a few extra days in Kemperbad. Now seems as good a time as any to mention the Lavender Lady and what happened in Bogenhofen, and then we'll go from there. Good luck. Then you go to Captain Yosef, and he says, well, I'm glad to see the young lady is, is, is all good, and I'm glad that you managed to convince Siegfrieda that we're, we're taking care of the bodies. Again, we'll obviously have to do a bit of salvage law here. Technically, that cargo was not ours, but I know how to handle that. We make sure to give our due to the river wardens and the city, and we can still get a little bit of profit as well. So actually, in a way, this might not all be terrible. No, Siegfrieda's enthusiastic, but <laughs> her heart's in the right place, at least... It's where it should be. Uh, about our our passenger, I, I know we're due for Kemperbad. Where had you planned on taking up after that? Mm, I hadn't really decided yet. I was thinking of heading back down the river again, uh, maybe even give Marenburg a little bit of a visit. There's some good trade to be had down there. I'll have to avoid Bogenhafen for a little bit. Uh, why, why, though? Is there somewhere you need to be going, lad? Uh, not me. Um... Our friend, well, Kruger's friend, and friend? She'd paid passage to Wickendorf, and she'd be very much obliged if our commerce could take us in that direction. He frowns heavily. Why the bloody hell would the last be wanting to go to a place like that? I didn't feel it proper to pry. Is that, is that a problem? Well, it's not a problem. It's just, you know what, I told it to you, to your folks, like, people don't go to Wittendorf anymore. Since the plague. This little bloody village in the middle of nowhere, besides, even when it was, when I was a young man, slightly less awful from what I've heard, people still avoided it. It's not really a place that does much other than bloody hell, there's a castle there and a small village. And again, since the plague... No one goes there. I was suspicious when your parents said that they had a client sending them down that way, but I... Gosh, two clients in one day. Hmm. I don't know, lad. I don't know. It's very... But she needs to get there, does she? So she says. But if not for her, I... I told you that when I... We ended up meeting because I was on a coach on the way to Altdorf. Do you remember? Hi. And the coach was uh, waylaid uh, en route, but that's not the entirety of the story. In fact, uh, there's a lot of the entirety of the story that I'm going to have to catch you up on. There were mutants on that road, and one of them was uh, someone that we know. Someone you know? Someone we know. Rolf. Rolf Hurtis from the village? He was one of the ones who changed. Old Rolf. I hadn't... <sighs> hadn't seen him for two or three years now. He's saying he, the change took him. What, what happened to him? I made it as painless as possible. Must have been difficult. Good on though, you lad, though. Why didn't you say this before? So you were, you were friends, you were attacked by some mutants on the road. Well, you should have, I hope you were in a proper carriage, lad. Again, I keep telling you that, that that's why we travel by river. Yes, okay, granted. <laughs> some mutants just attacked a boat, but we're normally a lot easier to defend. But those bloody roads from the Empire, God, God, Sigma, 
these people. <laughs> Madness, I tell you, to take anything other than a heavy carriage. If, if I could go back and do it again, I... Uh, I mean, it's... But it was mutants there, and it's it's only gotten worse. And I think at this point, I have to just come out and, and tell him about the men in cloaks with crossbows and Morsley stalking me and, and, and the whole all of it. He listens. He nods. Looks surprised once or twice. When you finish, he simply says, Oh, lad. Is your head full of sand or what? Why didn't you tell this all from the beginning? I could have armed my crossbow and my pistol properly. I thought it would be so simple and that we could we could deal with it and we wouldn't have to to drag you into anything i didn't want if there are people hunting me down in an alley and holding me at crossbow point i didn't want any of that to happen to you and i know i know you do realize lad it could have already happened we were lucky hell hell now i recall that night we left uh, wisebrook was that something to do with that as well it's all connected yosef i see Ah, yes, stupid boy. Well, I'm glad you told me now. We can be better prepared. Um, but still, this, this matter with this lady of yours, maybe that's a good idea, actually. Seems to me that you're having trouble in the big cities, you see, so maybe a little time on the river will, will mean that if people are after you, they're going to have to come and get you, if you get my meaning. They can't ambush you on a moving boat, not as easily, anyway. Says my mother was right all along. She said I was a fool to go up the river. Damn straight. As for Wittendorf, I suppose it couldn't hurt in Camperbad to check things. After all, they, they, they should have finished their business by now, and maybe they've come back and we could check and see where you, your folks are, because, well, I was a little worried about them going down to Wittendorf, you know. I am getting more worried about things by the day. Let's keep watch. Let's see how things are when we get to Camperbad, and then... I suppose if it's helping out a lass, we could help her get down that way. And maybe we could even find out for ourselves. Just make sure everything's fine down that way. See with our own eyes rather than hear the tales. Even though the tales are pretty bad. Pretty damn bad. Maybe for the first time on our journey, the tales will be worse than what we actually find. Deadly plague, boy. Two years ago now. The place was already bad. And then since the plague... Well, everyone just stays clear. No one's been given any word that the plague's even over. Just no word from there at all, really. If it's small consolation, I brought you a doctor. <laughs> he nods and begins to set the course. You think you've managed to convince him, and that, at least from Kemperbad onwards, he will be willing to take this passenger to Wittgendorf, if not be nice, but also, as he's just said, for his own concerns, and maybe even now your concerns. A plague town. Why were your parents heading there? I'm honestly anxious to find out uh, in, in the not good way. I will thank him uh, sincerely and from uh, the bottom of my uh, confused but well-meaning heart, uh, and then deliver this news, I suppose, first to Siegfrieda and Kruger. Um, I'll let Kruger deliver the news to his friend. And so the news will be delivered, and you'll all settle on what seems to be a plan. For now, all of you will be heading to Camp Bad, and then maybe from there, on well, Kruger's behalf at least, helping a friend get to Wittgendorf. One thing's for sure, surely no one will be chasing you all the way out there. At least you hope so, as the boat continues to move into the rapidly approaching night. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the legendary campaign The Enemy Within for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition, published by Cubicle 7. In this second part of the series, we are tackling book two, Death on the Reich. Joining us as players in this series are none other than Aaron Hammonds from Queen's Court Games and our dear friend Matthew Dawkins. The music was made by Flowers for Body Snatchers, Word Clock, Metatron Omega, Ager Sonus, Apocryphus, Halgrath, and Northumbria, featuring a number of collaborations with other artists, and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Check out their website at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for some moody dark ambient for your gaming table. 
We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobert, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Bob Lange, Julian, Cameron, and Anton for their generous support. And would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult of Infinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember that Skaven are definitely not real. <laughs>